Okay, so in the previous videos, we've looked at how forces can change an object's speed or its velocity, how they can change its direction, and how they can change its shape. But there's actually one final thing that forces can do to an object. They can act to make it rotate. And the turning effect of a force is what we call a moment of a force. And we can calculate it by doing, multiplying or getting the product of the magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance to the pivot. So to show you a few examples of this, we got a pivot marked in black and the magnitude of the force we can see there is 200 and the perpendicular distance between the pivot and the force is 200. So hopefully you can see fairly simply the moment of the 200 newton force is going to be 200 newton meters. Okay, so that's a simple example. So if we're pushing on an object, well, some, one thing that we can do is we can make it topple over. And it's really important in this scenario we realize which distance we need to multiply by to work out the moment of the force or the turning effect. So in this situation, the distance, it, remember, it needs to be parallel to the not, not parallel to the force, it needs to be perpendicular to the force. So you can see it's the two meter distance that's perpendicular to the force. So the moment of the 100 Newton force in this scenario is gonna be 200 Newton meters about that pivot point. That's the turning effect trying to topple the object. Okay. Okay, so where these ideas of moments is useful is actually when objects are stationary, or actually also when they're rotating at constant speed. Uh, but most of the scenarios we'll come across where we'll use moments of forces is when they're stationary. Because if an object is stationary and stays stationary, that means when you add all of the moments of forces together, that sum should be equal to zero. So it's a useful tool for working out unknown distances or unknown forces. So in this situation it's important to realize that actually moments are vector quantities so they have direction as well as magnitude and most of the time their direction will be either clockwise which we usually give a positive number two or anti-clockwise give a negative moment okay so if we apply it to this scenario this object is stationary and stays stationary so we're going to work out the moments about the pivot of the two forces and those should add together to give you zero. So the clockwise moment is going to be 200 times 1.5. You can see that force is trying to make this plank rotate clockwise. The anti-clockwise is the 100 Newton uh, moment and that's going to be multiplied by x because we don't know what that distance is. And that one's anti-clockwise so we're going to assign it a negative number. So when we add those two four moments together that should equal zero because it's stationary and staying stationary. And that means we can get find or find what x is it's going to be three meters or twice as far away as the 200 newton force okay so this kind of brings us on to what we call the conditions of equilibrium so there are two conditions of equilibrium the first one is the resultant force has to be zero it doesn't matter whether there are no forces or all the forces are balanced if the resultant force is zero that's one condition to be in equilibrium and the second one is that the resultant moment about the same pivot point is zero or another way of saying that is the clockwise moment equals the anti-clockwise moments of forces so if these two conditions hold or are true we describe an object as being in equilibrium so if an object is in equilibrium that tells us a few useful things it tells us the velocity will remain constant both the speed and the direction and it also tells you the rotational speed will remain constant so if it's not rotating it will stay not rotating or if it's rotating at a certain speed it will continue rotating at that speed okay so let's have a look at an example of putting these moments in equilibrium into use. So this system here is in equilibrium and we've got two planks. So there are actually two pivot points here and we have to work out what goes on the question mark to make it be in equilibrium. 
So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redraw this as a diagram. So this one over here. So uh, Y is the weight force of a yellow duck. P is the weight force of a purple duck. And the T's are there to mark the tension. So the top string is holding everything up. So there must be a force upwards from the string to do that. And the second string is holding the bottom plank up. So there's an upward force on the bottom plank. Uh, which is stopping it falling, but that consequently means there's a downward force on the top plank there. Okay, so that's our scenario and that's us turning it into a force diagram. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to apply the principle of moments to this. And we're going to apply it specifically to this bottom section down here. Uh, because if the whole system is in equilibrium, each individual part of it must also be. So I'm going to use the where the string is connected as the pivot point, so where T2 is acting. So the moment clockwise is going to be 1 times P plus 2 times P, because uh, those are both trying to make it rotate clockwise, and the moment anti-clockwise is just 1 times Y. So if, we, if it's in equilibrium, what that means is 1Y is equal to 3P, because the moment clockwise is equal to the moment anti-clockwise. Okay, so that's that bottom section. Now what we're going to do is actually look at the top section, which is also in equilibrium. So again, I'm going to say the pivot is where the string is connected. As long as we take moments all about the same point, we can pick anywhere we like. So the moment, so we know that T2, if we look from the left-hand diagram, must be equal to two yellow duck weight forces and two purple ducks. That's how it keeps this bottom section in equilibrium. So then what we can do is, well, we get the moment clockwise is one times the unknown that I've called X, two times Y plus three times Y. Those are all acting to make it go clockwise. The moment anti-clockwise is two times by T2, which gives us 16 P. So then what that means is those two things are equal to each other if the system is in equilibrium, which means that X must be one purple duck. That's what makes the forces, the resultant force equal zero and what makes the resultant moment equal to zero. And that finishes off this video on turning effects.